Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to do the solution for question two for the POA Jan 2021 paper two. All right, so uh, again, if you guys wanna see the other videos um, with the solutions for this whole paper, I'm gonna put a card up there and a link in the description below. So let's get into it. Okay, so of course, we're gonna take a read and, and again, um, give me some feedback as to the layout stuff. Uh, I'm trying this side-by-side -side layout thing where I can keep the question and the solution visible at the same time instead of having to switch between both of them, which some people gave me some feedback on and they said they didn't like that particular format. So I'm trying something different. All right, so I'm just gonna maximize this first so we could take a proper read of the information. All right, so it says um, AK, okay, I tried to highlight it, <laughs> didn't go so well. Okay, right, so yeah, AK Electronics buys and sells its products on credit only. So they make only credit purchases, credit sales. All right, so they're gonna have debtors and creditors. During the month of December 2020, the following information was extracted from the business's accounting records. Okay, cool. Let's take a look and see. So we have opening balances for accounts receivable slash accounts payable. All right, so we have debit balance. The debit balance would correspond to account receivable because account receivable is an asset and assets have debit balances. And accounts payable would have the 8800 because that is under the credit column. Accounts payable is creditors. Creditors is a liability and liabilities are credit balances. Now, closing balances, we have account receivable slash payable, right? 5,300 is under the debit column, right? And that implies, therefore, that it is the account receivable item, right? The closing balance there. Now, um, the credit balance here is missing, so that implies we don't know the closing credit balance, which also implies we don't know the closing balance in accounts payable. All right, so what we have to do, so the first thing they're asking us to do, apart from, well, first of all, they gave us, this, um, this set of information here in the middle, right? Payments to creditors, receipts from, so all that stuff will probably be used to populate control accounts. But the first thing it asks is to state three purposes of control accounts in the accounting process. All right, so let's go across to my solution and take a look, all right? Again, if it's too small, let me know. So it says the three purposes of control accounts are, they summarize an entire ledger. So what, remember, you have a sales ledger, which has all of your debtors accounts, you have a purchases ledger, which has all of your creditors accounts, and you have a general ledger, which has all other accounts. And <clears throat> if you have an account, a ledger with a couple dozen accounts, a couple hundred accounts, it could be very time consuming to go through that entire ledger and figure out, well, how much do people owe me, etc., etc. right? Um, <laughs> So what we do is we have this thing called a control account, which is where we use the information from the journals, the respective journals, to create summary or total accounts that summarize the entire ledger. So they summarize the ledger so it makes it easy to find totals. And it also helps us in assisting in the location of errors, right? And to, and to check the accuracy of double entry in the ledger. Because if you do a control account and you get an ending balance, and then you, do, you add up all of the individual balances in the ledger, and those things don't agree, then something had to be wrong somewhere because you can't, you can't summarize the information and get two different balances, all right? So those are the three purposes of control accounts in the accounting process. I would encourage you to go in the textbook and confirm if, the, if you see these three things or if maybe one of them is, a, is repetitive, right? And comment in the comment section below and tell me what, what did you find? And if, it, if a textbook doesn't have reasons for it, Take a, take, do a Google search. I had to do one because I only really knew two off the top of my head. I'm like, why we need more than that? But there are reasons for it. Okay, let's take a look at the other parts of this question now. Okay, so what do they want us to do? Let's take a scroll down. All right, and let me, let me maximize here so you can see what's going on, right? So they say, using the information on page nine, prepare the accounts payable control account for AK Electronics for the month and the 31st December 2020. So we have an accounts payable control account, six marks. So remember, a mark and a half, sorry, a minute and a half per mark. So this question, you want to spend about nine minutes on, no, no longer than nine minutes. Okay, let's go back up to the information. Okay, so we're going to need the opening credit balance here because once again, creditors or accounts payable is a liability and liabilities have credit balances at start. Okay, so let's, let's put that here, right? So you see opening balance brought down 8,800 that corresponds to this, this figure here. 
Now, what else would go inside of there? Well, payments to creditors, right? Now, what side? Well, when you pay back your creditors, you reduce the amount of money you owe to them, which means you're reducing your liability. And to record a reduction on a liability, guess what side we go on? We go on the debit side. So you're going to see payments to creditors on this side here. Next, what do we have? We have receipts from debtors. Well, that goes in the debtor's control account, which is most likely going to be the next part of the question. Credit sales is also for the debtors. Discount received, right? And credit purchases and returns. So these three things, well, not bad debts, right? So these three things, discount received, credit purchases, and returns upwards, those three things go inside of the control account. Now, discount received would reduce the amount of money you have to pay back to your creditors. And to reduce the liability, again, we go on the debit side. Credit purchases. Now, that's where you buy more goods on credit from your creditors, which means you're going to now owe them more money. And that implies your liability is going to increase. And to record an increase in a liability, you have to credit the account. So you're going to see purchases or credit. You can put credit purchases if you want, 68000 all right. The next item is returns out. Well, if when you return goods back to your creditors, you no longer have to pay for those goods. So essentially what you are doing is you are reducing the amount of money you have to pay your creditors. Hence, you are decreasing your liability, which will, will, which will require a debit to the control account. Right. Now, um, there's nothing else in that list on the left-hand side there goes inside of the control account. So we just have to balance off the accounts. Um, balance off the account. All right, so hopefully you know how to balance the accounts. We have a balance of 17,900, right, which is the closing balance in the creditor's control account, okay? Again, if you have any questions, now I have a video on control accounts. If I remember, I'm gonna put a card up there and a link in the description below, so you can check that out if you need to learn control accounts from scratch. Now, it's one of my early videos, and I think, I think some things are a little out of sync, so be kind if you're watching it, right? <laughs> it, is, it is helpful. Right? If you could get past that little initial part of it being kind of out of sync with some stuff. Anyhow, sorry, I'm rambling. The next thing they want us to do, as I mentioned, is they want us to do an account receivable control account. Um, as you can see, this is the format here. We don't really need the format up because we need the information. So we're going to go back up here. Right? Oops, sorry. Let's, um, let's get rid of that uh, particular thing. Right. So we're going <clears> to <throat> we're going to focus on these balances here as the open and closing balance. So we're going to start with the opening balance, all right, 8,500, and that's going to be on the debit side of the control account. So 8,500 there. All right, next, what we have, receipts from debtors, right? So receipts from debtors, when your debtors pay you back, they now owe you less money. So your asset of debtors has gone down. To record a reduction in an asset, you have to go on the credit side. So you're going to see on the credit side, receipts from debtors, 10,100. All right, the next item here is credit sales. Credit sales is where you sell more goods to your debtors on credit, which means they now owe you more money. And that means your asset of debtors or accounts receivable is increasing. So to record an increase in an asset, we're going to have to debit the control account, as you can see happening right here. Now, discount received, credit purchases, returns upwards, those were all in the creditor's control account. Now, these three items, bad debts written off, sales returns, discounts allowed, those are all items for the debtor's control account, on top of which they are all reductions. Bad debts written off means you're losing debts. You're losing an asset. Your asset is going down. That means you're going to credit the account for that. Sales returns, your debtors send back goods to you, which means they no longer have to pay you for those goods. So your debt, your asset has gone down. And discounts allowed is where you allow your debtors to pay less. So you have reduced your asset. So those three items are all going to be on the credit side of the control account. Uh, the last thing we have to put here is the closing balance, 5,300, which you see corresponds to the figure across here, 5,300. And all we have to do is put the totals and put the balance brought down at 5,300. Right. <laughs> and the last thing we have to talk about, um, last part of the question, is this thing here, which is asking us state three reasons why the company's bank statement Sorry, we're here, right? Did not agree with the business's cash book balance. So I'm not entirely sure where this question came out from. It doesn't seem to have anything to do with any other part of the question. Everything was controlled accounts before, and all of a sudden we're talking about bank recs. Okay, cool, no problem. Once again, to me, that's a, a criticism I have of the structure of the exam. Um, <coughs> sorry. They cannot adequately test an entire syllabus of that size in five questions. Even if you say part A and part B, let's say you have 10 questions, maybe, 
But in my opinion, they should get rid of the multiple choice and give you all two papers. Oh, I should, I should probably cut that part before I get dislikes on this video. Anyhow, I'm entitled to my opinion as an educator. Or at least I claim to be one. <laughs> right, so state three reasons why the company's bank statement did not, ba bank statement balance did not agree with the cash book balance. Now, if I remember, I'm going to put a card to my bank rec playlist up there and a link in the description below. Okay, there's one reason why the cash book statement, sorry, the cash book balance and the bank statement balance don't agree. The information in both of them is different. That's the only reason. Now you have some reasons. What, what are some of the reasons behind that one reason? The major things you're talking about, as you can see here, unpresented checks, bank lodgements, and errors in, in either the cash book or bank statement or both of them. What is an unpresented check? Go and check on my bank, my bank right playlist. <laughs> no, kidding, I'll tell you now. When you write a check and you pay somebody, well, I don't know who uses checks anymore, but I think actually yeah, my company does, right? So when you write a check and pay somebody, they have to carry that check to the bank for the money to come out of your account and go in their account. In your cash book, you would have written on the credit side, you made a payment to whomever, whoever, wh wh whichever, right? <laughs> so your cash book balance would have gone down, but until and unless that person to whom you pay the money carries the check to the bank and the bank takes the money out of your account, your bank statement balance is still going to be higher than your cash book balance. Right? So that's going to cause those things to disagree. Bank lodgements. That's when you put money in your bank account. Now, I don't know how many of you all have done this. You've gone to the ATM and you made a deposit or you've gone inside the bank and you make a deposit. So money is supposed to... So you have money and you put it in the... You physically put it in the bank. So first of all, when you got the money or you got a check actually, you would have gone in your cash book and debited for the receipt. So you have money coming in. So your cash book balance went up. Now, when you put that check in the bank, at least in Trinidad, in certain instances, it takes five working days for that money to, as they say, for it to clear or for it to hit your account. So it means that your cash book would have gone up because you got a check. But until it clears, until the bank does whatever it has to do to put the money in your account, your bank statement balance is going to be lower than your cash book balance. So that's another reason they won't agree. Right? And then, of course, we have the errors. So if you make an error in your cash book that is not reflected in the bank statement, both of those things are going to agree, and vice versa. If the bank makes an error in your bank statement that is not reflected in your cash book, they're not going to agree. Okay? So those are the three reasons why the company's bank statement balance will not agree with the business's cash book balance. So I don't know why they use companies and businesses. Like It's two different things. It's the same company, right? Okay, so ladies and gents, that's about it for this question. Be sure to come check back for question three, probably tomorrow, the day after that. And again, you can check out the playlist in the description below. And if you have any questions, comments, or queries, please let me know in the comment section below as well. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.